Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. This is what we plan to do today. Okay. So, now <coughs> without further ado, let us remind ourselves what groups are. What is a group? A group is a collection of elements. So, you can call them anything, right? You can call them like Orgo, Vivav, Dola, that kind of thing, Mehak, or you can call them ABC, etc. For now, since we do not want to write too much, we will write ABC. And one thing uh, do not forget is order of a group is the total number of elements that are there. Okay. Now, let us relate this to our uh, problem of uh, symmetry. If we believe for a moment that the symmetry operations of a point group actually form a group, then what will be H for that point group? What is H? What is the order for a point group? Now, you are, you are playing a spoil sport. I am asking a simpler question. What is H? H is just the total number of symmetry operations. If the, but the reason why I state what seems to be the obvious is that people confuse between operations and elements. Please do not do that. H, the order of the point group is the total number of symmetry operations, not the total number of symmetry elements. Okay? For example, in uh, C3B, how many symmetry elements are there? C3B, ammonia. I will tell you one, E. C3, then elements, elements, the 3 sigma v's, 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, not 4, definitely, right. So, 5, but H is not 5. What is H? E, C3, then C3 square. C3 square is a different symmetry op operation, do not forget that. Then sigma v, sigma v, sigma v, 6. So, h is going to be 6. Okay. Please do not forget that. When we talk about order in terms of, uh, in uh, the context of uh, symmetry point groups, we are talking about the total number of symmetry operations, not element. Okay. So, a collection of elements, but not just any collection of elements. A collection of elements that behave in a particular way and uh, a collection of elements which have certain properties. What are the properties of elements of a group? What are the properties of group? Reciprocity then? Yeah? Associativity, right? Identity, yeah, of course. Then? Closure, closure and generally I like to start with closure, right. what happened, oops, closure, closure means that whatever the operations are there, right, if you take their products, products means you operate, well, uh, I am talking in terms of group right now, not symmetry operation, but we come to that also, if you take the products of the elements of a group, say AB or BA or A square, then all these should also belong to the group, that is closure. Okay? If I now think in terms of a symmetry point group, let us say C3V once again. In terms of C3V, what is the meaning of product? What are the operations tell me again? C3 and let us say sigma V. So, if I write, so in, like AB, if I write C3, dot sigma v. What does that mean? Uh, 
I have something say phi right I make C 3 operate on phi and then I make sigma v operate on whatever is the transform coordinate. So, this is what I write as sigma v C 3 phi ok. So, what I am saying is that you have E, you have C 3, C 3 square then sigma v I will call it A, sigma v B, sigma v C ok. So, if something of if there is a function on which sigma v A operates and then sorry C 3 operates and then sigma v operates on it then what I get should also be uh, a member of the group. Let us see. Uh, okay, it is not a bad idea to write like this because then sigma v a, sigma v b, sigma v c uh, can be assigned very easily, is not it? Of course, when I have written a, b and c, I mean h a, h b, h c, do not get confused there. They are the same thing, it's just that I want to write it like this. So, when c 3 operates on it, what do I get? Let us say like this. Where will A go? B. Where will uh, your uh, B go? Oops, sorry, sorry. A, B, C. Now, let us say we operate sigma C or rather sigma A. What was the original sigma A? What was the original sigma A? The plane of the paper? Then what do I get? N, C, B, A. What is that? Can I go from here to here by a single symmetry operation? Sigma V B, right? So, what I get then is Sigma V, uh, which one did I operate? A C 3 is equivalent to sigma V B. Original molecule ok. All right. So, what you can do is whenever you have the time and inclination you can work out this thing for each and every uh, element each and every product ok. And you will find that whatever you get is another symmetry operation of C 3 V. Doubt? Question? Ah, yeah, we have been deceived actually. What was the original position? No. Ah, no. So, that is what I said. When we designate the planes, we have to stick to the original uh, nomenclature. So, we have to behave as if the planes are space fixed ok. Sigma C dashed hmm, fine ok. You can work it out you see that you will be able to draw something like this. C 3 V E C 3 C 3 square. In fact, I will write sigma A, sigma B, sigma C ok. Now, let me write it here as well E C 3 C 3 square sigma A, sigma B, sigma C right. So, how do I write this element? This is E E. Which E first? This first, this second. 
this one first, this one second. What is E dot E? E. What is the next one? Actually, it is E C 3. C 3 operates first, right? Then E operates afterwards. That is how we write it, right? So, this is C 3. And I think by now you will uh, not disagree with me if I go ahead and write this. Okay. And similarly, I think you understand how to write the first column. And then what you can do is you can fill in the rest. Try doing it, you will find out that for each of these elements, you will be able to write one of these. For example, what is C3 C3 square? E. What is C3 square C3? E. What is sigma A sigma A? Sure. Sigma B, Sigma B, Sigma C, Sigma C, E. Huh? So, I worked out so many, now you work out the rest. I worked out all the difficult ones. Work it out, you will see that you will be able to write uh, something one among these. We have already demonstrated one. So, please uh, try this out yourself and convince yourself that at least for C3B, the property of closure is satisfied by the set of symmetry operations. Hmm. First property is closure. Okay? We understood closure and we have convinced ourselves that for C3V, the set of symmetry operations satisfy the property of closure. Okay? Next one is the presence of an identity element E x equal to x c equal to x. An identity element is such that it multiplies with any element to give back the same element. And not only that, it commutes with any given element including itself. What is the meaning of commutes? I think you understand the meaning of commutes, right? You can interchange. So, E x equal to x c equal to x. So, this is the presence of identity. The identity is like 1 for multiplication and multiplication what is what is relevant here. Okay. If you are talking about addition, it has to be 0. Okay. But here what is relevant is multiplication. Now, go back to C3B. Uh, does C3B have an identity element? Yeah. What is that? E or C1, whatever you want to put it. Doing nothing. That is the identity element. Third property, as you said correctly, is associativity. Right? It does not matter whether I perform C, perform B C and then A, or whether C and then A B. Doesn't matter. You get the same result. Now you have constructed the multiplication table of C three V notionally. From there, try and convince yourself that associativity holds it holds, right? Last as Dola said correctly is the presence of a reciprocal. Reciprocal means you have for every element R, you have another element S, so that R S is equal to E. So, you call S R inverse, okay? Just do not forget that here we are not really talking about multiplication, multiplication, division, division. When we write multiplication for in our case for symmetry operations for example, all it means is, uh, sub, uh, is uh, successive operations. Okay? Now, going back to C 3 B, what is the inverse of C 3? C 3 square, do you agree? C 3, inverse of uh, C 3 is C 3 square. What is the inverse of sigma A? Sigma A, 
sigma b is sigma b like that all right. So, you see uh, with the example of C 3 v what we have done is we have demonstrated we have convinced ourselves that the symmetry operations of a given symmetry point group actually form a group. So, we can use group theory on the symmetry operations. Of course, it will be difficult if you want to keep on turning things and uh, how will you use group theory on that that is why we need the matrices fine. But before that let us remind ourselves of what is a cyclic group. A cyclic group what is a cyclic group? And I have written abelian as saying cyclic that is a different issue. A cyclic group is something in which the elements are like E then maybe uh, x then x square and so on and so forth ok. Cyclic group means uh, say take for example, the C 3 point group. If, if there is a C 3 point group what are the symmetry operations present there? E then C 3 then C 3 square ok there is nothing else. So, A B C C is just B square ok. So, that, that is what a cyclic operation is not it that is a cyclic group and on a cyclic group what happens is that a cyclic group is also an abelian group. Abelian group means commutativity holds A B is equal to B A. And one common confusion that we have is that we assume that associativity as well as commutativity holds for all groups that is not correct. That is not correct. It may or may not be a commutative ok. In cyclic groups however, cyclic groups are abelian and this commutativity A B equal to B A holds for cyclic groups all right fine. Group multiplication tables we have already demonstrated what is group multiplication table using C 3 V, but let us now do a little bit of formal introduction to group multiplication tables ok and we are on the last slide I think we are almost done maybe second last. So, like C 3 V what we can do is we can work with abstract groups. C 3 V is a very tangible group is not it you know exactly what is the meaning of C 3 you know what is the meaning of sigma v right. But even before that see uh, what we are doing now is that we have the benefit of hindsight we know already that group theory holds and all that. But then when abstract group theory was formulated uh, nobody even thought that this is going to be an application in chemistry and all. So, it is completely abstract it is just uh, pe people kind of went with the flow and saw what comes out. So, let us retrace the paths of those uh, pioneers and let us see how we can work out the group multiplication tables of even abstract groups without knowing what is the meaning of A, B, C, etc. ok. So, H equal to 1 that is kind of a moronic proof right because there is only one she says yes moronic proof. So, there is only one element what is that one element? Eh? E not C E. So, what would the multiplication table look like? We call it G1. You know about G8 and G10 and H not G10, G8, G20 and all that groups of powerful nations. And sometimes group of powerless nations also get together and call themselves G whatever, Gn. So, that idea perhaps came from group theory because we call them G1, G2, G3, G4 depending on what H is. So, G1 is kind of a stupid group because only one element is there that is E. So, if you want to write the multiplication table you write E, E and E ok. If this comes in the exam everybody gets 100 out of 100 and goes home happy ok. But fortunately life is not that boring. So, let us go a little further let us talk about H equal to 2. H equal to 2 what is the name? G 2 you got it right G 2 ok. For G 2 let us say that we have two elements not let us say if G 2 if it is G 2 it has to have two elements. What is the first one? E and second one because it is my initial it should be A right E A. Let us try to write the multiplication table now this is how I will write it. So, now see what will be uh, at the cross section of E and E E E E simple. In fact, you can write the first line E A right. 
what will be e multiplied by a it will be a and what is a multiplied by e again a only one element is left and you know so what will this element be my second initial d you wrote a so why don't you write d and complete the story because if you do then you are going to violate this property of closure right closure has to be there so you better write e don't write anything else and in fact a into a is e not only closure why is it e first of all closure secondly your uh, inverse has to be there right so a has to be the inverse of itself that is what we learned for a group of order h g2 a has to be inverse of itself the so structure doesn't have anybody else right so it has to be inverse of itself got it mehak agree simple h equal to 3 is h3 so you should give the answer it is a yeah eab eab g3 whatever it is g2 that is a genuine mistake not one way to so th so this is a peril of uh, copy paste uh, even this has a moral uh, in it this is a peril of copy paste when you copy paste sometimes you paste and then you forget to replace it is g3 of course not g2 okay what will be the first row simple what will be the first column now we have to work out the rest what will i write do i write a or do i write b two options Fifty percent probability A, fifty percent probability B. What do we write? Now there is no probability. Probability of one is one. Probability of the other is zero. Because there is something called rearrangement theorem. Okay. Rearrangement theorem says that each row and each column lists each group element to many edges. once and only once you cannot have an element that is missing in a row you cannot have an element missing in a column you cannot have a row or column which does not have an element have you understood the meaning okay so what it implies is that no two rows or columns can be identical right because if it's identical if there's a if there are two identical rows then what will happen you go down the column you will have the same thing twice that is not done no two rows or columns can be identical okay does it remind you of something yes it does actually i was going to say that but does that remind you of something more related to physical chemistry <laughs> or mathematics the talk about matrices so what is the first cousin of matrix what happens when in a determinant two rows are the same or two columns are same zero right So what this implies is that each row and each column is a rearranged list of elements, and hence this interesting name of rearrangement theorem. Okay, each row and each column is a rearranged list of elements. To understand what where we are going, we can actually uh, work out the different permutations. Okay, first row, first column in any case is defined, and then we can. what are the permutations in a way that no element is repeated in any row or any column and we can actually construct the entire character table without even knowing what is the meaning of this uh, elements a b okay so that is now how powerful 
abstract group theory is getting ok. Now of course, is this word of God written on stone in uh, letters of fire? No. So, there has to be some proof or demonstration or something right. What was what word, word of words of God written on stone in words of fire? The ten commandments. So, here there is no commandment right. So, there would better be some proof and this is how we can see that uh, what we are saying makes sense. What is the nth row? Think of any group, think of any general row, nth row. This will be the elements there, right? E a n, a 2 a n, so on. So, a, a, a 2 means the second one, first one is a 1, it is just that we know that it is going to be e, so we have written e, ok. So, do you agree with me that this is what the nth row is going to contain? E a n, then a 2 a n, a 3 a n, so on and so forth, a n a n, finally a h a n where h is the order. Make sense? Just close your eyes and think what it will look like. Make sense? Everybody convinced? Hmm? I am not convinced that everybody is convinced. How do I write the elements there? What do I write first? The, the one on the top or one on the left? One on the top, right? So, what is the second element on top? A 2. And what is the element on the left? A n. So, I write A 2 A n, ok. Next one what is it? A 3 on the top, on the left it is still A n, I am going from left to right in a row. So, it is A 3 A n, so on so forth. Finally, you are going to reach n there also. This is going to be A n A n and then last one will be A h, the last one, last element and the second one will be A n. A n is always the second one, right this is what it is. Now, what have we said? What does closure require? That these are all elements of the group, ok. Now, are any two of these elements identical? See, everything is different, right? A 1, A 2, A 3, A 4, they are, we have considered everything to be different, right? And that each of them multiplied by a n. So, they are all different. So, no two elements are identical that is the proof ok. That is the proof of rearrangement theorem and incident rearrangement theorem is discussed everywhere. Uh, I am uh, following the treatment of cotton that is all, but it is there in uh, all all the books that we, we have on our text fine. Now, knowing that ok. So, each entry in the row is unique we already said that. Knowing this what will now can you fill in the blanks? Can you do this sudoku? What will this be? B and what is this then? E. What is this? E. What is this? A. B E E A. Right? So, what turns out here is that A is the inverse of B, B is the inverse of A. Okay? this is G 3 and do you notice something uh, strange here? Not strange maybe, but something unique here. Abelian group, Abelian group, it is also cyclic group, cyclic or Abelian group, right. So, we stop here today. And tomorrow we start at what 5.30? 5.30. We start at 5.30 tomorrow and we start with this. We have gone up to h equal to 3. So, next we will go to h equal to 4, ok. And meanwhile what you could do is ok. How many are there in C3? Uh, C3V, how many elements are there? 6, that, that is too large. We have to think of a group which is G3 or G4. What we will do is we will compare the multiplication table of some point group which is either G 3 or G 4 and we will see we get the same thing all right. So, until 5 30 tomorrow.